Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. Um, I have the immense pleasure of introducing one of our current students, Warren Ting, to you. Um, he is, you know, he, he says that he's loving it. And so I think that you'll be able to hear that coming from, from Warren as we talk. But what's really exciting about having Warren here today is that he's going to talk about something that I think, you know, is really relevant to many of our applicants. Um, and so, you know, we'll jump into that after I do a brief introduction of Warren. So Warren, welcome to our afternoon session of the info session. Happy to be here and welcome everyone. Great. So just by way of background, I just want to give you a little bit of background about Warren. He's currently the vice president of underwriting for Hamilton Township Mutual Insurance Company in Ontario, Canada. And um, he's, in very, he's also very involved in uh, a number of associations, um, as well as most recently being named to the Financial Services Regulatory Authority of Ontario's Techn Technical Advisory Committee for Auto Rates and Underwriting Regulation Reform. Just as an aside, that's probably the longest name I've read in, out of all of the people I've ever introduced. In his spare time, Warren also teaches basic insurance courses at Seneca College, as well as the Insurance Institute of Canada in their Chartered Insurance Professional Program. Warren is also very active in the extracurricular activities here at Columbia, in student government, as well as with the Insurance Management Club. And he was recently awarded the first ever Dennis A. Baker Insurance Advancement Scholarship for his academic accomplishments and his dedication to our industry. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Warren. Hello again. And um, yeah, and I hope that everyone, you know, takes the opportunity to talk to him. This is really conversational, um, you know, and what we're going to do is talk for about 15, 20 minutes and then open it up for questions. And, um, you know, Warren, if you're comfortable taking questions and, you know, in between my questions of you, you know, you can feel free to do that as well. Um, so if anyone has questions, you can put it into the chat. Chrissy will monitor it for us and then, you know, we'll we'll take it from there. So first off, um, I just like to ask Warren why he chose to enroll in our program. Well, thank you for the question, Teresa. Um, so first of all, I've been working in the insurance industry here in Canada for 20 plus years. So, um, you know, I've gone through my education up here, which is the equivalent of your CPCU down in, in, in the U.S., and I was looking for more, really, at the end of the day, because uh, I do have a deep desire of personal and professional growth. And throughout my career, those of you who might be working in insurance, you know that this business is ever changing. The insurance landscape, new risks, technologies, regulatory challenges. But what I've seen is that what I do is very siloed in one aspect. So I thought... This program would be great in the sense that I could then see many of the things that I just talked about and with the curriculum. Um, Brittany, could you mute your um, your audio, please? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so as I was just saying, uh, with all these changing technologies, new risks, regulatory landscapes, this program provides all that, plus, you know, learning about risk management, back office operations, product pricing, underwriting, to name a few. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I looked around in numerous programs in the U.S. for insurance, and I landed back at Columbia uh, with its problem-based learning format. And as you all know, uh, it's an Ivy League institution. And having a master's degree in an Ivy League institution um, puts it, sets it above, a little bit above the rest. So the opportunity really to attend an Ivy League institution plus study in an industry that I truly love seems like the perfect combination for me. Yeah, I, and, and thank you for that. And I think that that has been you know, really consistent with what we are actually trying to do as well. We are really out to put together a program that is like bar none, unlike any other. And, you know, and I think that um, you know, the value of working, not just with the faculty, but working with students like Warren is actually one of the major benefits mm -hmm. of the program, the way that mm -hmm. we've designed it. So um, that's, that's something that I'm, I'm actually really enthusiastic about. Um, uh, I think that there, there was a question about, you know, scholarships and such. And so, Chris, we are actually going to talk about that a little bit. The reason why I invited Warren to speak today is because Warren 
is one of the students who managed to work with his employer to get his employer to sponsor him for this program. And so I, you know, I, I think that, you know, being able to have your employer on your side from the very beginning, and in his case, even before he began, is actually really key. And I thought that he could share his experience and maybe give you some pointers for how you might be able to, um, you know, speak to your own employer about the value that this could bring to them, as well as obviously to you. So with that, I actually wanted to start with the first question that I had for Warren, which is, what were the most important things that you raised with your management about how this program would be beneficial to both you as well as them? Right, that's a great question. Um, well, first of all, when I was looking for a program, I was also looking for an MBA. And mm -hmm. from a cost perspective, an MBA is at least two or three times, if not more, than this program itself. So trying to sell a program that is that much to your management team is very difficult from the get-go. So there's no master's degree of this kind anywhere. It's at an Ivy League institution. And if you're looking at it from a dollar and cents kind of thing, it's actually a better sell than an MBA. And I can tell you that if you are already working in the insurance industry, the, the tools and what you learn is so specialized in what you do on a daily basis as compared to a generalized MBA, it is worth every penny that the, the tuition for this program. Um, another thing that I raised with my management is that there's a, the beautiful thing about this program is that it's asynchronous. So you work on your own time. Um, the time commitment is outside of work. Uh, obviously, if you have family like I do, I have two young kids and I have a family to take care of. It's very important that you regiment your time, um, that you set a schedule. Once you set that schedule, you are home free in the sense that you know when your study time is, when your family time is, when your work time is, so that you could plan ahead in terms of when you listen to your classes, when you do your assignments. The assignments are all at a certain time uh, in terms of deadlines, so you know exactly uh, how to plan your time. But it's really important that you stay regimented. Um, another thing that I talked about is networking opportunities to my management. Um, over the past two semesters, interacting with my cohort from around the world and also with the professors and guest speakers has been a treat in the sense that they've given me a different perspective on how insurance works, not just in the Canadian landscape, but in the U.S. landscape and worldwide, which brings more, uh, brings more life to what you bring to your company. And I think my company, uh, you know, I mentioned this in the beginning, but now they're actually seeing it in fruition, like with, with the conversations that I have. And it's really, really neat. What I would say, it's really, really neat because you, you get to talk to the guest speakers that come on. So when is the last time you get to email and contact the CEO of a company to, to answer one of your questions, which is very, very neat that you know, no other program would probably have this type of opportunity. And obviously, I talked about reputation and credibility of, of, of Columbia. Um, you know, the hardest part, I would say, is getting in. Once you're in, and once you're, you're in the program, the idea of working together as a cohort, working together as a team with your professors, your guest speakers, and people... Uh, is very neat in the sense that, you know, I could talk to my, my management team and say, I have a call with someone who, who is a student in Switzerland, and he's going to tell me about facultative insurance and how the facultative industry is, which is, you know, it's not a conversation that you get to have uh, on your daily, you know, daily grind in, in your workplace. So, you know, a lot of these factors, including, you know, talent development, how they're committing to me and I'm committing to them uh, is really what sold my management team to allow me the opportunity to take this, uh, take, be a part of this program. And so um, 
you know, is was there anything about your company's culture you think that actually made it easier for you to have this conversation with them? Yeah. Um, or there, so things that people can look for in terms of their company's culture that they can kind of hone in on? For sure. Um, I think, you know, since the COVID pandemic, a lot of the companies have really changed their focus about flexible work environment, about work-life balance with, with uh, the advent and, and the increased usage of AI and technology. I think a lot of companies right now are changing their culture in that there's a lot of continuous learning and continuous improvement to retrain their staff to work in a hybrid work environment, to learn about new technologies. Um, I think what everyone can do is look at your own. Um, you know, every company has their own corporate culture with their own values. And there's usually five or six of them. And one of them could be continuous learning, learning, uh, continuous learning, focusing on professional development, employee advancement, um, talent retention. I think that's a big thing in this day and age. It's hard to retain good talent. Um, I think with all those points, um, you could use those in your proposal to your employer to say, look, uh, this is the culture. This is what I'm striving to, to build my own worth for the company, to build my own education and to build my own knowledge. We can work together. It's it's hard for an employer to really come back to you to say, uh, you know, if when you're saying that you're going, you're 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 aligning your values with the company culture, it's hard for your company to say, no, that's not part of it. We're just saying that, right? Um, I think that's important that that you focus on those values and you align them with with your values to to you know convince your employer to, to support you academically or just, you know, financially or time-wise in terms of what, what the time commitment is for the program. Can you talk a little bit, you mentioned that you did a proposal. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, the detail, you know, some of, some of the really important things that you think had to be included in your proposal to kind of illustrate or demonstrate that return on investment? Sure. Um, so first, the first thing I did was gather all the comparable programs that I wanted to I wanted to apply to. And from that, obviously, the dollars and cents really play a big role, how much the dollar and cents are for a, for for an employer. So basically, I gathered, you know, insurance programs, MBAs, uh, MBA programs from different schools. And I made a little chart with uh, with my proposal. And I also did like an ROI analysis, like a return on investment analysis. So I, I laid down, you know, what the pros and cons are for each program. Uh, I laid I laid out what the tuition is, how long the program is, how the program is formatted, uh, how it relates to what I do uh, in terms of what the program could bring to the company. Um, what kind of knowledge and skills I could learn for increased performance, increased efficiency, better decision making, um, and basically show that uh, not only not only the the nuts and bolts and the dollars and cents, but my commitment to my company. So basically, the proposal will say that you know I promise to be at my company after graduation for five years or whatever the, the time frame is that I will give back, that I won't just take the take my sponsorship, you know, get it done and then move on to uh move on to greener pastures. Um I also what I did was I linked the sponsorship to company objectives. At the end of the day, uh the company objectives was actually for me was sort of like a succession planning for my next role. So I link that, this program to the objectives of the company that the company has for me for my next role. That, you know, at the end of the day, this will help me for, for, for my future growth in the company. And obviously, I think the biggest thing to approach this proposal is to keep your ears and eyes open 
to listen to your company, um, you know, not, not even the direct words, but the indirect words, uh, understanding your company's financial constraints or priorities, right? At the end of the day, asking for a full 100% sponsorship, chances are, will highly be unlikely. But if you have a company that would do that, great. But what companies would like to also see is that you have skin in the game and that, you know, you're not just spending the in spending your insurance company's money, but you're actually putting some skin in the game too. So for myself, I do have a partial scholarship or partial sponsorship from my, from my company. So I'm paying for some of it. My company's paying for some of it. Um, and we move forward and, you know, they're, they, they, they like to see that it's not just a commitment from them, but it's a commitment from myself as well. That, that's great. You kind of covered the next question I had, which was whether or not you had to negotiate the scholarship, but I, I the sponsorship. But I think that, you know, your explanation about how the they expect your, the student to have or the employee to have some skin in the game makes absolute right. sense. Right. It, they, it, there used to be programs where, you know, when I worked for AIG many years ago, they used to pay for undergraduate educations. There were people who worked full time and got their undergraduate degree and then went to law school part time and got that paid for. And there was an expectation, right, that you had to stay there and they would have you sign a contract three years, five years, um, because, you know, it, it makes sense that they wanted to get the return on that. A lot of people didn't honor it. And unfortunately, I think that created the situation that we're kind of in now in now where companies are not as readily saying yes. But I think that to Warren's point, you know, things have changed in terms of talent management. And now it's become a priority for them to figure out how to keep experienced um, uh, employees, you know, within their ranks, because it costs so much more to retrain a new one. Right. So um, so I, I want to mention that if any of you are putting together these plans or would like to put together these plans and you want, you know, me or maybe even Warren, if he's so, if you would be so generous to just take a look and say, oh, you know, maybe this is something you could tweak or maybe this is something uh, you could add. You know, I'm open to it. I can only speak for myself. Um, but, you know, feel free to reach out to us if there's any way that we can help you in that regard. So um, finally, I just want to ask one more question and then I'm going to open it up because it is 620. Um, what does your company, Warren, require you to do in order to affirm that they've made the right decision in terms of their investment in you? Yeah, and this good is question. something, and I, I raise this because I think that this is something that you as as applicants can tell your you know, employer, say, hey, listen, I'm willing to do this if you are willing to sponsor me. You know, and then that 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 makes it sound like you're not just asking them for something. Right. So um, I normally would give because I meet with my board of directors once every two months. And basically what I do is I tell my board of directors, what am I studying? Uh, how my classes are going? Give them a synopsis of, you know, your what your the day in the life of a Columbia student is is like and how it's not sort of taking you away from the actual work that needs to be done in your company. Um, obviously, they're looking for academic performance. Um, so I want I just want to say thank you to the faculty and Teresa for uh, awarding me that scholarship that really helped a lot. Um, I think telling them that I, I won a scholarship at Columbia College with uh, Columbia University was was huge uh, in the sense that it's not just me saying that I did well, but my my professors and and the faculty uh, also affirmed that. So um, I think that was affirmation that I'm 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 uh, I'm doing well, and I'm I'm going to provide uh, that type of knowledge to the company, and also the application of the knowledge. So even though my courses have not ended yet, like I, I'm still I just finished my second semester. I'm already applying what I've learned in my first six courses that I that I've taken uh, since September, and this is you know putting together a flow chart, a Gantt chart, um, learning what is a value added workflow and a a, a non value added workflow, and actually tweaking the actual workflow in my company right now 
based on what I've learned in the past uh, six months. So they've seen the fruits of my labor and, and of the course. Um, again, no matter where you are, I could see online that there's many people from around the world. Um, even though this is an American university, it's based in New York City, what you learn in this course is transferable to no matter where you are. Um, we all work in the same industry. We're all in one family. Uh, we share ideas. But yeah, things could be a little different culturally or country-wise, but at the end of the day, the workflow, you do endorsements, you do cancellations, you write new business, you need production, you pay out claims. We all do the same thing. And I think learning the best practices as you take these courses and applying to them, applying them in your company while you're taking these courses is good affirmation for them to say that not only are you performing like you're supposed to in your workplace, but you're actually applying what you're learning to, to your everyday work. Um, you know, and, and the biggest thing I think is knowledge sharing. I think the biggest thing at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do is gather the knowledge from these amazing, uh, these amazing professors that have, you know, 30, 40 years of experience and just trying to absorb like a sponge that I can then share my knowledge, not only to my own company, but to, you know, your network um, of who you work with, uh, who you might be in contact and communication with. It could be different people from different companies that, you know, you share best practices and, and, and whatnot. And this knowledge sharing is what I'm trying to get from this program that I could share with not only my company, but the insurance industry of where I work and, and where, where, you know, I do my business sort of thing. So at the end of the day, that's, I would say is what the affirmation would be um, to my employer and, and to the insurance industry uh, in Canada or in the area that I work in. Yeah, thank you. I think that one of the things that comes to mind is that you know, he, and he, and as actually one of his peers said in an interview, I had done an interview with Marissa Peters, and you'll you'll find a transcript of that on the website, as well as on LinkedIn. And what she said was real time. Everything that we're doing is in real time. So whether it's learning in real time, applying in real time, seeing results in real time, that's something that we've really been experiencing. And I am over the moon happy about that. You know, that happened not because of me necessarily, but it happened because of our students. Um, because they're making it happen. So I, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, Warren's bringing that up. So I want to open it up for some questions that um, the people online have, um, as opposed to listening to me talk, which you'll do in the next half of this session. Um, well, but Warren, one of the first questions is, what's the, what is, let me see, um, what were the other resources that you had with respect to, um, you know, uh, uh, scholarships and, you know, other financial aid? I think that came in like right in the beginning. Yeah, so Teresa would know this well. Um, I applied to every single scholarship under the moon because scholarships is money, free money at the end of the day. And um, basically, obviously, I have my skin in the game as well because I have to pay for a portion of it. My company sponsors a huge portion of my tuition which is part of my proposal. Um, I would say really apply to all scholarships out there, okay? Like Spencer Scholarship. Um, there's, there's some uh, cultural scholarships as well. If, you, if you're part of a, a cultural group, uh, you know, there's one for the uh, uh, Chinese American Insurance Association. There, there's different groups that you could apply to. Um, at the end of the day, uh, there are, a lot of scholarships out there that you could apply for. That list that you see on the insurance management website keeps increasing by the month. Um, I still remember when I first started, there was two or three, but now there's five, six, seven, eight, ten scholarships. There are scholarships out there where you would write an essay, like for a captive insurance company or captive insurance association, and you could win a scholarship by writing an essay about what you can do for the captive industry. So 
this whole scholarship process is not just a not just to apply for a scholarship, but it's also another opportunity to learn and to use. And the beautiful thing is you could use your professors, you can use your your the faculty to help you in the scholarship process because they are more than happy to see that you're winning scholarships. That's taking the financial burden off of, taking some of the financial burden off of you as well. So I would say, um, yeah, apply to everything that pertains to your group or the group that you fit in and go for it because that's that's key. So um, um, I think that the next one here is Warren, what is the best way to become to become involved in student government or other school groups while being fully remote? Excellent question, Brandy. Um, okay, so before I get into student government, this whole program, you make what you make of it, okay? The amount of work that, the amount of effort that you put in will reap the amount of reward that you return back, okay? So use all the resources as much as possible. Now to that note, Brandy, the best way to get into the Columbia community is to get involved, okay? To get involved. I'm a remote student. And I'm part of student government right now. So um, I'm the current insurance program, uh, insurance management rep. I'm going to become part of the executive board of student government next year as secretary. So that insurance rep position will be open for you to apply. And basically what you become is you, you then can build and expand your network, not only just in the insurance network, or insurance management network, you start to build networks outside with other programs like applied analytics, actuarial science, bioethics. You start to learn, a, uh, you, you get introduced to a lot of other students from other programs. And I would say, Brandy, I don't know why no one, I, wouldn't, I don't know why anyone would not run for student government because you really, really get into the gist of university life. Like I just came back from New York City actually last week where I met Teresa. We had a we had a little shindig with uh, the alumni and the and the cohorts together. And I also I also helped out with alumni uh, in their alumni event for for their graduation. And that's part of student government as well. So you can get involved. I've organized some coffee chats for uh for for student government we had a tal uh, trivia show for online students so you can get involved even though you're online and you're not there all our meetings in student government are online so we don't really meet in person unless you're in town we can meet in person but our our standard meetings our monthly meetings are all online so you could get involved just that as much as someone who actually goes on campus I've been answering some of your questions um, that that are kind of related to the program. Um, and that there's there's work life balance, which is uh, what some are asking about. And I think Warren touched on it a little bit. We we built this program around the fact that our students are all working professionals. One of the things to know is that the average age of our students, I just recently found out, is about 38. So we have those who are younger, you know, who've been out of school for three, four years. But then I also have a couple of students who've been working for over 25 years. So number that says many things, right? Number one, it says that no matter how long you're in the business, there's always something new to learn. And that, that's what, you know, Warren's peers are getting out of this. Number two, it also says um, that there are a lot of people who are in the middle of raising families, um, working full time, and they have other financial obligations, they have other commitments, but yet we built this program knowing that so that it would be manageable. Now, no one is saying that this is easy. It is, you are earning a degree from Columbia. So we don't make it easy for a, a variety of reasons, right? And you, you wouldn't want it to be easy. However, you know, if you have a business trip, keep in mind that we release some of our classes completely so that as of September 6th, the first day of school, you have the entire semester ahead of you and you can look forward and you can work forward in some cases. We try to make sure that our students work together because we want them to learn together 
And we don't want this to be like an independent, I'm working on an island type of program. It is not that. So if you think that you're going to come into the program because it's online and asynchronous and just work on your own and completely on your own time, that's not the experience because we want our students to be engaged with each other, with us. We also want, we also have them working on projects. We have them engaged in um, conversation with each other, which is all digital. Um, and the students actually get together a lot on their own time to talk about their courses, to talk about the work, to, you know, to discuss issues that they're having. So, it, it, you know, while the learning is asynchronous, the experience is, you know, much less that. Um, so, so I want you to understand that, you know, we've all been working professionals. We get it. I have lecturers who volunteer to be available 24 seven, if you want to talk to them. And I actually told him, uh, no, I don't think so, because now you're creating a standard that the rest of us can't keep up with. But he still keeps to the 24-7. Um, so we know that you have other things going on in your lives. And so we will you know, work with you as best we can to meet you where you are. So I wanted, I wanted to make that clear. Can I just add a quick thing? Sure. Even though it's asynchronous, you know your cohort so well because everyone has a voice and the beautiful thing about hosting and 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 doing your assignments online and having the thought process of thinking what you want to post you know you go to class everyone's been in undergrad before you go to class you sit in class you listen to the teacher you go home after class you might not put up your hand you might not say anything right you take your classes, you take your exams, you're done. That's an, that is an in-class sort of environment. In this class, we all talk. No matter how busy we are, we all talk. We post a whole bunch of things that are, you know, pages and pages long because we're passionate. We're all passionate about, about what we do. And because of that, the, 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 the closeness that the cohort the cohort becomes it's unbelievable we're just like family right now like we 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 laugh together we cry together we we help each other out you know we we make if people fall down we help them up it is amazing like in the beginning when i first started i thought asynchronous how how can you build a relationship in an asynchronous environment i can tell you no word of a lie it is it's been unbelievable the 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 connections the, the friendships that are made are forever, really, at the end of the day. Like, it, it's beyond the course work now that, you know, we, we, we stick together as a group. Great. So um, I'd like to actually think, I, I'd like to take some time to go through our general information session. So I'd like to, at this time, thank Warren for joining us. And if anyone on this call has any additional questions for Warren, please feel free to send them to me or to Chrissy. And, you know, we will definitely um, have an answer to you, whether we answer it or whether we have Warren answer it for you. Um, and I think that, you know, if you happen to find out where, how you can contact Warren, <laughs> we, can, we can give you the information and, you know, you can, you can talk to him if you, if you'd like as well. So, um, you know, Warren. I think that you said that you would be amenable to that. So I'm going to hold you to it. I've already uh, put my email out there. Oh, Please. there you go. All right. So Warren has put his email in the chat as well as Chrissy. So yeah, if you have any other questions for Warren, please feel free to reach out to us and to Warren um, and we will certainly answer them for you. So thank you very much, Warren, for joining us this uh, evening. Oh, no problem. Anytime.